everyone, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to week four of our six week online class. So um, it's wild that we're now in week four but time flies in the summer. So this week we're thinking a little bit about curating space in digital culture, um, specifically discussion spaces in digital culture. So how we tend to curate the way conversations go down in digital culture and you know just what are the dynamics of those conversations. So we're thinking about this through the lens of how callouts and canceling tends to take shape in digital culture to think about how discussions around social change tend to move forward. So in thinking about how you know social change tends to take shape within you know a digital environment we're also thinking about how think pieces and tweets serve educational purposes and you know what are the pros and cons of those particular types of digital content serving to shape people's understanding of vital political and social issues and how it motivates people to think and act in particular ways. So once again, tying it back to that idea of persuasion and social change. So I want to share some thoughts on callouts and canceling as we move into this conversation and first think a little bit about how callouts and you know this notion of canceling um, there's so many different gradients to them so we can think about this first through the lens of you know for instance Disney anybody that's taken another class with me too knows I love to talk about Disney and um, the impact that Disney has on the cultural imagination but Disney is a really interesting example of you know a particular institution that has evolved in relation to callouts. So thinking about the ways that Disney has put forth very traditional gender roles, gendered expectations, as well as, you know, regressive racial ideologies in their films, and then were called out for it and acted upon that to create new narratives and new films that responded to that criticism. But, you know, some would argue or many would argue that, you know, that was really just in the interest of serving their bottom line and to maintain their earning power and status that they responded to those call outs in kind. So we could think about this in relation to, you know, princess narratives and a lot of the, the conversations that were around how they were, you know, very you know, conservative, um, antiquated depictions of romance and, you know, um, Disney then created all these new narratives that updated those particular stories. So, um, you know, when we think about call-outs in relation to contemporary social movements as well, those are some of the most profound examples of how call-outs and canceling takes shape. So we can think about this in relation to the Me Too movement um, that responded to different instances of sexual violence as well as the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, my dog is now here with me. <laughs> Just jumped on uh, the futon that I'm sitting on. Um, so thinking about Black Lives Matter in relation to fighting for the liberation of Black folks from uh, state-sanctioned violence. And we can think about the range of uh, call-outs and uh, canceling that happens within each of these movement spaces. So thinking about, in relation to Me Too, um, different processes of accountability being put in motion because of call-outs that took place. So obviously it was not new news that, you know, people like Harvey Weinstein or R. Kelly had, you know, been doing bad things for a while, but the the visibility of the Me Too movement really pushed those stories to the forefront, um, it's pushed survivor stories to the forefront. So people had you know, a more, you know, expansive understanding of what was going on with regards to sexual violence in the music industry, um, in Hollywood and things like that. Um, so we can also think about the, the various call-outs that happened in relation to that that were not as high profile. So people 
discussing their experiences with sexual violence and bringing people into conversation about the harm that they had caused um, through sharing their stories. So, you know, those gradients of, you know, different forms of call-outs happening. But in relation to the Black Lives Matter movement recently, we could think about how call-outs range from you know, calling for uh, the Louisville, Kentucky Police Department to fire the police officers um, and prosecute them that killed Breonna Taylor. Um, and that could also be paired with, you know, your aunt on Facebook making a post about All Lives Matter and bringing her into conversation about what that means when she says All Lives Matter. So thinking about how there's different scales of impact at play here when it comes to call outs and it could result in the firing of cops, it could result in just educating your aunt, um, but you know there's varying levels of influence that can take shape when we think about these conversations that happen on social media. So you know, I'm thinking about, you know, these various forms of call-outs in relation to potentially, you know, your own experiences with navigating, um, you know, what call-out culture looks like. And it's important to note how, you know, call-outs are not always something that is done with the intention of education. So something that I'm sure, you know, folks in this class are familiar with that I've seen as well is, you know, call outs being issued for the sake of someone posturing or performing, you know, their own politics or um, where they stand on an issue. So we have seen that, for instance, um, recently in relation to, say, for instance, you know, a white person calling out another white person when it comes to their familiarity with racial injustice and calling them out without the goal of necessarily educating them, but calling them out just to point a finger at, you know, how they are racist, um, you know, they are they have no redeemable qualities and really just as a mechanism for shame. So thinking about how there's a lot of things to parse out in digital culture in terms of how these conversations take shape, um, what is actually promoting education and getting people to move forward and act, um, and what is potentially just a way to sort of reinforce someone's particular social media brand or perform something. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot at play there. But I'm really interested to hear uh, what everyone's thoughts are on how callouts can either help or hinder conversations. Um, as well as how, you know, say think pieces and tweets do play a role in, you know, facilitating important dialogues to motivate people to think and act in different ways. So I look forward to hearing what everybody has to say, and I'll talk to you on Google Classroom.